Welcome back to another Ab Summer Target. Uh, today we talk about the NHL Draft 2024, a little bit the Ab Preview. What could happen for the Montreal game? We have approximately 25 days, 23 days for the NHL Draft 2024 in Vegas. And we have two great uh, experts uh, about the NHL Draft. I'm talking about Marco Rabi <laughs> and NRTAP. And Marco, give us a bit more information. What we we'll to accomplish during this video. Well, Coach, we had such an amazing reaction to our mock draft. I think we're over 5,000 views, lots of uh, great comments, lots of uh, negative comments or critical comments too, but it's all part of the fun, right? So uh, we thought we'd just kind of follow up on that. Lots of things have changed, you know, and, and we talked about that when we did the uh, last mock draft that still lots of players playing, still lots of conversations happening. So we figured, you know what, let's take a look at the mock draft that we did last time and let's revisit it. Like, is there anything, you know, did we have second guesses after reading all of your comments and thinking about it some more, what other players are kind of doing as they're still playing? Like, is there anything that we would change? And that's what we're going to reset now for the Montreal Canadian. We're going to target the fifth overall pick and the 26th overall pick. I'm going to give you some name here and you're going to tell me what you think and what you feel that the Montreal Canadian are going to target. I have Kenan Lindstrom. We have that. Evan Dimitrov, following by Berkeley Katen, following by uh, DJ Igela. Finally, oh, a new name, pop up, Seneca. Mm -hmm. Part of this uh, possible amount of can are we looking for. And maybe if we want to talk about defensemen too, we can go after them. So uh, let's start in with Emerson Artap. Uh, first of all, tell us when a couple of days ago, what was your selection and what could change or ne maybe not change uh, about your selection for Montreal Canadiens at the fifth overall pick at 2024? You know, Coach and Marco, the, the, the only thing I, I can say about this year's draft is probably it's going to be the, one of the most inconsistent in terms of, you know, reading different scouts, uh, reports on these players and different pros that have come out and given their lists of who their top you name it 16 or 32 are or even further when you look at these lists they're all over the map it really i think a lot of it will depend on what the teams in front of montreal will favor in terms of addressing their need of course you always want to pick the best player available when it's your turn but sometimes if you know that there's going to be an excellent prospect be it at defense on defense or on in forward position position you have to lean in that direction i went to, at the time uh the way it unfolded when we did it marco it just happened that demidov fell to the fifth spot so for me it was a no-brainer coach to select demidov i have a little bit more reservation right now that he will drop uh, to number five because there's been a lot of conversation that at, at least one or two other teams ahead of us seem to be leaning towards a forward given that he might be off the board at that stage i'm leaning more uh Caden Lidstrom, to be totally honest with you. I like the fact that he brings some size to the table. He's been very well established what he's done. My only reservation is the fact that obviously he had a, a back uh, injury this year that kept him out uh, for an extended period of time. So the numbers aren't as impressive as I think they could have been had he played the entire year. But from all indications and the fact that he's, he's going to be going to the combine as well, uh, we're going to see that he uh, he will be fine. And if he's available at that stage, I would go with the um, Lidstrom. Awesome. What about you, Marco? Well, Coach, if we go back to our draft board, like Enter Entertap said, right? Like we we've seen so many different mock drafts. We've had different insiders kind of publish different lists and we've seen everything, right? Like it's, it's really kind of, I, I think last time I called this the, the Baskin Robbins of all drafts, right? Like there's every kind of flavor for every kind of uh, player or team, depending on kind of what you want. You know, mock drafts where three out of the first four picks are four and similar to ours where three out of the first four are defensemen it, it really could go anywhere <clears throat> similar to uh, I think the biggest development is what we've seen out of Columbus right with uh, Don Waddell now being the president of hockey operations and general manager for the Columbus Blue Jackets I think we know that he has a history of not necessarily being against drafting Russians and it's and he did have an interview on the Jeff Merrick show talking about how it looks as though he's probably going to be prioritizing a forward that I think in his own like if Paris phrasing what he said that it's easier to kind of like build your defensive team and concepts and it's harder to get offensive talent that's kind of the way that he views if you look at it that way you have either lindstrom or demidoff probably going to columbus i would imagine for the purposes of this draft and again in the last draft guys we didn't plan out 
oh, okay, let's make it so that Dibidoff lands at five. It was just just alternated picks, and then uh, Entertap took what he felt was the best player at number five. If everything stays that way, my first pick would still be Demidoff. He's still absolutely my first pick. If he's available at number five, there's no question in my mind he would be the ideal player. I, I think Montreal need. We have another video coach that's either out or not coming out soon where we look at the entire pipeline prospects for the Montreal Canadiens. Really good potential NHL talent, but not a lot of game-breaking elite NHL talent. So to me, Demidoff, this is the kind of draft where you really have to swing for the fences and go for ta- go for talent. It, assuming, though, that Demidoff and Lidstrom are gone for this scenario, it leaves you with those three potential forwards, right? Catton, Iginla, or Senek. I might shock you guys. Catton is now a little bit closer to Iginla, watching a lot more Catton. I watched a couple of his interviews as well, and I was just really, really impressed with the way way that he approaches his game and I learned a little bit more about his history and, and everything else I watched a little bit more on Catton and I wouldn't be upset if they go with Catton as you know I'm a little bit concerned the only thing I'm not concerned about his height the only thing I'm concerned with is for a player that size usually you see somebody like he's an elite skater in terms of his edges and He's a very he's kind of like Cole Hudson or sorry Wayne Hudson in the sense where he's very deceptive and he can he's very good at cutting corners and and doing that. But his actual acceleration speed is not the same as some other smaller players like a like a Jarvis or a Stankoven that you see is doing really well at the NHL level. That's my only concern with Ber- Berkeley Catton acceleration in terms of skating. But with the right training, he can add more strength in his legs, and maybe we see that improve. So for me, it's between a Ginla and Catton. If uh, both Demidoff and Lidstrom are there, it's a really tough call, right? Like Tija Ginla for me is it's the safest pick, right? Because you know he's going to play hard, plays inside, but then you have that potential really high end talent with Catton. I'm kind of talking in circles. I'm going to be consistent with what I said, and my mind really changed after I saw. And we analyze the entire pipeline for the Montreal Canadiens, realizing that Montreal has a lot of mid-level potential middle six or second line talent. Swing for the fences, guys. Let's go for either Catton or Demidon. Talk a little bit more about the uh, 26 for the Montreal Canadiens. And I would like to see a little bit more what your expectation for the pick for the Montreal Canadiens. And I give you two options. Pick if they keep the pick. Who will be the player who you would like to Montreal select? And if not, edit trade for. I'm going to start with enough tap on that one. It's so hard to prognosticate, Coach, because uh, so many things could be happening on that draft floor uh, from time to time. Uh, exchange through trade, surprise picks, uh, players that are taken earlier than that you anticipated, or maybe so, you know a couple of the players you had in mind are taken uh, just before you're about to make a move. It's easy to say that the, there could be a trade but as you know a trade is always very difficult to manufacture there's a lot of moving pieces and and they and both parties have to be in accordance with what's happening there so i'm going to stay away from the trade for now even though it's it's very probable that that could happen in terms of picks at the 26th level if you're looking at forwards uh, there were a couple names that sort of stood out to me and players they're all above six feet uh, which is uh, an added feature. I'm thinking of guys like Andrew Basha from uh, Medicine Hat. Uh, that would be a very good player and, and would fit in with Montreal. Of course, there's a lot to love, even though it's, I think, a bit of a reach at 26 with Dean Letourneau, six foot seven, 220 pounds. Like this guy brings quite a bit to the table and it's not just f- from size. It's also his uh, physicality and he has a very soft touch around the net as well and can score. I think he had like over 125 points uh, this year with uh, St. Andrew. You know, admittedly, it's it's not a strong team in that league. Uh, the CHS, definitely something to be admired. Finally, I would end with my third choice. If they decided because they got a forward at number five and decided to go with uh, defenseman Montreal, I made this selection and I really reached for it in the draft when we did it. I would go with Charlie uh, Alec from the Brandon uh, Wheat Kings. Uh, I think this guy, uh, his stock has really risen the last uh, three months or so. He seems to be a very solid player that can fit in either at a number two, three, or four defenseman spot for Montreal. Marco, I will ask you the two questions. First of all, the first question is about any specific club uh, and after that talk, uh, you would like to Montreal select at 26. And my second question, if you trade four and you go to pick number 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Which player do you think Montreal should have to trade with the 26 overall pick? I, I think Entertap copied off my list because he had a lot of the same players that I did. I really like Michael Hage, I guess, you know, but he's might be a little too high 
there uh, for 26. But I guess really the only player in that range other than Basha, which is also one of my favorites, you know, maybe you're looking at Cole Baudouin, you know, but again, like coach Cole, like to me, these are kind of picks that are safe, right? Like Cole Baudouin is no, no question. I think his, his ceiling or his floor is pretty high, right? He's going to be hard nosed, like third line player. And that's good value. Kind of like we were talking about Beck, right? Like that's really good value in a late first round pick. But with where Montreal is in their process, I think they need to swing for the fences, right? So if I'm looking at somebody and I'm, and I'm looking to maybe kind of reach a little bit, there's maybe like a Surin you know, that maybe you look at, he's kind of a bit of a unicorn player. I think he's ranked anywhere from like 35 to 40. So a bit of a reach, right? But a very unique player size and plays with a lot of ferocity and really, really good hands, right? So what I would be looking for coach, if you're going to be picking a 26, pick a unicorn, pick somebody with a really high ceiling, swing for the fence. That's what I would, if I'm trading, if I'm looking to kind of move up who I would be targeting in terms of teams here, let me just kind of pull it up. You know, I, I think New Jersey's play, pick is going to be in play. Not impossible that Ottawa's pick is in play. You know, maybe, maybe kind of the Minnesota, right? So if you're looking at any of those teams, say anywhere from like eight to like 15, somewhere in that range, we had him on our list before. Like I, I would be very excited with Beckett Seneca. If you can move in to kind of swoop in and get that player. I think one thing we didn't talk about coach in the, uh, for the fifth round pick, Montreal is, if there's one thing that we've learned is that they love to go for the late risers, right? If you look at Slavkowski, he was a late riser. You look at Reinbacher, he was a late riser. Right. I know there's a lot of reports. There's one cruder that that's pretty popular in Habsland that has him a lot higher than uh, you know maybe Montreal picking him at number five. I think it's a bit high for Seneca at number five. But if you can move up into the top fifteen to get you know a Seneca, that's I think would be very exciting. If you trade for oh, 14, okay. 15, 13, the pick yeah. number twenty six have to come with something else. What it would be? Oh, gotcha. Okay, so who are you including with that? To me, I would be more than uh, willing to depart with obviously one of the left-handed defense whether it's Harris, Struble, and then I'd also be willing to include a player like Mashar or Harris, Farrell, or somebody like that. I know like it's 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 not easy. To, you, you're not bundling volume to kind of move up, right? Um, so if that doesn't get it done, I, I would be willing to move up. I'm not going to say the X word. I'm not going to say the X. I'd be willing to trade a left-handed defenseman to move up to get Brett Senek, Beckett Senek. And after that. Well, it, de it depends, first of all, what that 26th pick, how far up you're moving, right? And if at that stage, what is left like if you're picking let's say 11th or 12th and all of a sudden maybe we're fortunate enough to either land Demidov or Lindstrom and now you have the opportunity because he's still out there somebody like an Iserman that would make a lot of sense to me and so what would I bundle with the first pick overall I mean I'd be willing to fence either with uh you know Harris uh and maybe even a second round pick Uh, in order to make that happen. Interesting. Interesting about that. that I would trade 26 trouble and Joshua Hua. Oh, oh, I don't know. I don't That's know. the only way you can sell it to the team going to get number 12, 13. But you're not, uh, but see, then you're not really advancing that much, right? Because isn't yeah. our confidence level pretty high that Joshua Hua is going to be at least in our top nine. And as soon yeah. as Nick, you're, you're trading a guy that you're 80% confident is going to be a contributor in your top nine. Now I'm getting a Colt as a man, a Seneca, or I'm getting a Igala, or I'm getting a big forward there. Those players we talk about is a top six on my lineup. I get it. I'm willing to pay, but the, the one area that you have the least amount of depth right now is scoring forwards. You have to try to move something else, coach. Like it's not like it's not just because it's his name is Wa and he's Frank phone and all that i just don't think we're kind of moving ahead enough it's not that the price is too much it's where you're paying from in terms of your depth that is not a good fit in my opinion you have to try to put together a package find a partner that has the needs that matches what your surplus is and if you're able to do that that's when a trade work is what untouchable of course not right like if you're talking about adding an impact player if you have to include a wa to make an, a nature's trade happen okay now I'm listening a little bit more because, you know, you have a little bit more certainty in terms of what you're bringing to your lineup. Take Minnesota. Yeah. They're looking for a defenseman. We get struggled. You pick a number 26. It could be a, a good, a Sasha Boivar example, or maybe a plus you get a Joshua who could be a top nine for them. Both of them could play in NHL right now. And what the biggest problem for Minnesota is the money. If I'm Minnesota, I'm looking at 
somebody like Tuck. Maybe you do the 26th overall pick. Yeah. So maybe you throw in like a Tuck and then a, another kind of pick. Like obviously if it's an Aginla or a Catton that's available and it's in Minnesota's uh, pick, then that's something I would consider. I, I agree with that coach. I get it. I'm willing to sacrifice. I'm totally willing to sacrifice, but I would be shocked. Shocked. It was a great, uh, great uh, conversation tonight uh, about the NHL Draft 2024 ab preview. We'll give you a little bit an idea what could happen at the 5th and the 26th. Uh, we'll see. And we're going to complete that video very quickly. I'll give you one minute for each one of you. The Stanley Cup final uh, 2024 between the Edmonton Oilers versus the Flat Panthers. Your prediction, Mr. Enarta. Well, since my bracket got totally blown out of the water uh, after the final four, I, I absolutely love what I'm seeing from Florida. They're obviously the superior team from the perspective of, of depth. Uh, I think uh, defensively, they're they're stronger. Uh, they can roll out four lines on you, uh, no problem. And they play a, a much more physical brand of, of hockey. But you know what? I'm watching this Edmonton team and something is, is noticeably different with them. It, it's like they have bought in and they bought in at the right time. They seem to be peaking at the right time. They've gone through all sorts of adversity at different times during the regular season and in the playoff. And I just feel they might be a, a team that is destined to win here. And uh, when you got the best player on the planet, you cannot discount that. I think Entertap took up my time. So I'll say um, I'll say real quick that uh, I'll, I'll put it this way. If Edmonton continues to be super dominant on the penalty kill, I'll say Florida in seven. If Edmonton cannot continue to be as dominant on the penalty kill, Florida in six. So again, Mr. Nartai and Marco, thanks for joining me tonight on this great episode of the NHL Draft 2024. Until the next time, my friend. Of course, uh, you have greatness inside of you, and we wish you an amazing, great, blessed day, everybody. Thank you to watching another Habs Nation video. But before we leave, we invite you, don't forget to click on the like, subscribe to the channel, and finally let us a comment about this video. And remember, you have greatness inside of you, and we wishes you an amazing, great, and blessing day.